Mikey, this is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. With your daily devotion for what? December the 6th. Hope you're having an excellent day. Hope your holiday and Christmas season is going spectacular. Drinking lots of coffee, drinking eggnog, eating lots of cookies. Here's the thing. Are you looking forward to the office party? You know what I'm saying? Don't make a fool of yourself. That's a free tip. That's it. Look at, look at, look at. That's a free tip. Don't make a fool of yourself at the Christmas party if you have a Christmas party. And if you don't have a Christmas party, take your family out to eat, okay? That's the best blessing of all other than Jesus Christ. Hey, today we're going to kind of be reminiscing. And you're like, reminiscing? I like that. Hey, we were talking about the three wise men a couple days ago. Were we not? You and me, the Magi. Here's the thing, following the star. I love the story, okay? And uh, would you have liked to have been on that six-month, nine-month journey following the star? I wonder what they were talking about. You know, were they excited? I wonder what kind of foods they were eating. These guys were rich. I wonder if it was like prime rib every night. You know, I'm just what I look at, look at, it's, it's you and me in the man cave. I'm just wondering, okay? But one of the things I didn't ta- talk about, what was it, a couple days ago? I guess it was a couple days ago. One of the things I did not talk about is when they finally get to Herod, which is a dirt bag, we went over that many times. Okay, watch that if you have it. Piece of garbage. Look at, look at, they get to Herod and they say, hey, we're looking for the king, we're looking for the Messiah, we're looking for the, the savior of the world. And Herod's just like, what are you talking about? Another king? I mean, he's so jealous and freaked out in the mind, so unstable, it's not even funny. You make me sick, Herod. Herod, you make me sick. Hey, listen, listen, listen very carefully. (laughs) Guys, guys, it's early. It's early here. I am drinking coffee. That's what matters. Okay, look at it very carefully. Are you with me? Are you with me? Say you're with me. Did you say it? Okay. I'm, oh, Tracy's going, I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, look at, look at, look at. He talks to Herod and says, hey, we're looking for this guy. Herod goes in to the people, right? Who are the scribes? Well, what would the scribes be? People who are writing the Bible to the teachers of the law, meaning to the, the religious leaders. He goes into this area within his kingdom. He says, hey, I'm going to bust your head open. Why didn't you tell me there was another king coming? Um, hey, we got the wise men here. No, I'm just kidding. That was fine. He goes to them and he says, hey, there's a king that's supposed to be born. I guess it's been prophesied in your, in your stuff that you've been writing every day that you've held back from me. Um, where's he to be born? Here's what they say. They have no problem. You know, the religious leaders, they, look, they don't even have to look it up. It's not like, oh, let me find it for you, king. Uh, oh, it's uh, city of David, Bethlehem in Judea. Oh, okay. Uh, I wonder what, honestly, this is just me and you talking, okay? Because this is kind of informal this morning. I wonder what Herod was thinking. I'm going to bust your chops. You knew this. You knew some king was coming, some messiah, some savior that's going to rule the world, and you didn't want to share it with me. Oh, wait till these wise men leave. I'm going to show you wise man. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Don't worry, guys. Read it in its entirety. In its entirety. Can't talk this morning. Because it's in Matthew chapter 2, okay? So they go to the religious leaders, and this is what they say. But unto you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be my shepherd of my people Israel. Meaning this. Uh, hey, it's city of David, Herod. Here's the thing. Sorry I didn't mention it beforehand. You know, go, 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 go. That's why, okay. But do you know what's tragic here? is how indifferent these religious leaders are. Because I think, I honestly believe, and I know with all my heart, that if I, for years, have been doing nothing but writing down Bibles, from this Bible to this Bible, making transcripts, studying the Word of God daily, getting the Word into me, praising God, worshiping God, I mean, living for the Lord, okay? Just just so excited about God's called me into ministry because that's what these guys were doing, okay? They were just doing it the wrong way. They were doing it religiously. You know, oh, let's check Mark. I got two Bibles done today. Hooray! You see what I'm saying? Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. So when they hear that the wise men have been following a star and the star is going to lead them to the Messiah and the wise men are there to worship and give gifts, what do they do? Do they go, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, uh, hey, 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 uh, Jennifer, 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 you're not going to believe it, you're not going to believe it, pack my bag, pack my bag, pack my bag, yeah, 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 put my cologne in there, my, uh, my guild hurt, uh, my toothbrush, I need my toothbrush, put some beef jerky in there, it's a long journey, okay, oh, oh my goodness, I can't believe it, the Messiah's coming, the Messiah's coming, oh, 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 yeah. oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh, hey, George, 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 you know what we've been writing every day for the last 30 years, it's now, it's now, oh my goodness, high five, high five, fist bump, oh, hug, hug, hey, let's have a party. Let's have a party. What did they do?
They did nothing. Guys, what did they do? They were indifferent. They were callous. They had heard it all before. Hey, I I've heard this before. They didn't care, guys. How many people do I know, listen very carefully, who are just like these religious leaders? They just don't care anymore. Listen very carefully. We never, as Christians, as men in the man cave, okay, as followers of Christ, okay, as disciples of His, His children, want to let our relationship get to that point. Okay, and you're like, well, Matt, how does that happen? You know, because it's happened to a lot of people that I know, and it's happened to me, Matt, who is in the man cave with you, and how did it happen? It, it happened. Can you hear the airplane going over? Bzzz. Hey, thanks for interrupting the man cave. I'm just kidding. You know, he's probably f flying to some resort, but he didn't invite me to go, so I'm a little bitter. No, no, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Matt, Matt, how, how does that happen? Because it happens to the best of people, okay? Sometimes, watch this very carefully, it's success. God has blessed you so mightily, and then you just kind of, you don't, you would never say, I don't need God, verbally, but you kind of start living that out, meaning you're just not paying attention to God anymore, and, and over time, because the riches and the blessings and the prosperity isn't bringing you contentment anymore, okay, because it can never bring contentment, only God can bring that peace that surpasses all understanding, and the joy that's overflowing, okay, the void that's in your life is only filled by Almighty God, it isn't filled with materialistic items, or, or prestige, or honor, or any of those things, but Satan has fooled the world in believing that, that's a free one, that's a whole nother devotion, but when we get to that pinnacle, we stop doing the things that we were doing when we were kind of down and out. We stop reading our Bible. We stop praying. We, we start ditching church. We stop giving because we're greedy. We can't, we can't get enough. We've gotten a taste of the poison and the rat always wants to go back for another nibble and then another nibble. Eventually, what happens? He dies. Do you know rats are smart? You're like, no, man, don't go there. No, I'm going to tell you about rats. I was in this church, okay? You're, no, look, you think I'm, Tracy's laughing at me, but this is a true story, okay? Rats are smart. And look at, and you think I'm kidding. I promise you, rats are this freaking big. They're so huge. They scared me, okay? Well, listen, I'm up there at this church preaching along. The biggest rat that I've ever seen runs behind me, but I don't see him, right? I'm preaching to the congregation. All of a sudden, they jump back, and I thought, man, the Spirit of God's upon me. Look at them. They're all like this. You know what it was? It was the rat scared them. That's how big the rat was. That's funny, isn't it? Listen very carefully. But I, I, I go, and I put cheese out for the rat, and I put this big trap, huge trap. I'm going to kill the rat. You know what I'm saying? He won't touch the cheese. I'm like, why? What rat doesn't like cheese? This is crazy. And I, and I think, someone says, put peanut butter out. He doesn't do the peanut butter, just sits there. But I'm seeing the rats all around this church. Huge rats. And that's a whole nother devotion, why there are rats in the church. Okay? You with me? Watch this very carefully. Finally talk to an old timer. <laughs> Man, I understand you got a problem with rats. I do. And, and I can't figure it out. I put the best, I didn't put craft singles out there. Man, I put some good cheese out there. You listen, I put some really good cheese out there. He says, Matt, rats are smart. I'm thinking, rats are smart, huh? I think this guy's crazy. You know, it had it just uh, sniffed the gas a little bit too much in the hauler, okay? But watch this. What, what are you talking about? He says, rats get used to an environment. He says, what you do is you put the trap out there, but don't put anything in it. And they're going to walk by that trap for weeks with nothing in it, and they're going to get used to that trap, okay? With, there's no, it's not set, it's just sitting there, okay? And I go, I go like this, you got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding, Matt. He says, now after about two weeks, okay, what you're going to do is put some gloves on, and you're going to set the trap with a piece of cheese. Now the rat is used to the trap, and he's going to go and he's going to move on the cheese, okay? Well, that's what happened, but he, the, the rat was still smart. He ate the cheese. Look at that rat with his little small teeth, ate cheese, ate peanut butter, everything I put on the trap. The trap was not wrong with the trap because I smacked my hand a couple times, okay? This is a, a professional ninja rat, okay? He could get all the food. You're like, Matt, are you going somewhere? Are you going somewhere? Yeah. So finally, I go to the guy. I said, look it. 
What you said was true. Smart rat, but he's eating all the food, okay? I'm not going to continue buying cheese at 15 bucks a block, okay, for the rat to eat. I would eat that cheese, but you're not paying me anything. Freebie, freebie. Uh, th this cheap, this church was cheap, okay? Watch this. He says, all right, I didn't want to have to do this. Let me go home and I'll be back. He comes back and when he, he has this box, okay? Looks like it's 25 years old. It's called Final Bite, okay? And he just walks through and just starts sprinkling this stuff. It looks like cat food or something. I go, what is it? He says, what happens is this stuff makes the rat really thirsty. <laughs> I go, what? He says, it thins out his blood. It's like final bite is nothing more than a blood thinner, okay? And so it thins out the rat's blood and it makes him really thirsty, okay? And then he eventually dies. Oh my goodness, I had rats dead everywhere in this church, okay? It just showed you spiritually what was going on there, partner. Okay, good grief. Matt, I love the rat story, but why are you telling me the rat story? <laughs> really is a good question. Okay, no, you, you don't believe I can tie in the rat story with our text today, do you? I can tie anything. I'm <laughs> just kidding, guys, guys, guys. Guys, hey, look at, look at, when I turned off the camera, Tracy's just like, this ain't happening. There's no way you're tying in the rat story. Friends, do you know... We get used to sin just like the rat gets used to his environment. We get used to, over days and months and years, of getting in a routine. And if the routine isn't correct, we can start to think that this is how it is. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't read my Bible anymore. I don't have time. Did God send a lightning bolt out of heaven? No. You see what I'm saying? I just got used to the life I was living. But if the life that I'm living isn't what? Pleasing to God, isn't edifying to me, isn't building me up, eventually it's going to start to what? Tear me down. What's going to happen? It's going to be like the final bite. See, I can't, li I was never created to live outside of Christ. I mean, I love the story of Adam and Eve in the garden when they sin. Not that they sin, but I love that God is walking in the garden. They can hear they, look at, look at, they can hear God walking in the garden. Adam! He's hiding. Why? Because he says he's naked. How did you know you were naked? That's what God says, okay? Sin, sin destroys us, okay? Friends, are we used to our environment? And is, is the environment or the life, are you used to your life? And the life that you're living, is it pleasing to God? Is the life that you're living day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, looking back, is there anything that you would change? Is there anything that perhaps is contrary to this? Is God involved in your life? Is this involved? I'm not talking about obeying God, the letter of the law, so I can get to heaven. You're never going to get to heaven by obeying the law. I get to heaven by Jesus Christ as a result of being born again, as a result of having a new heart, as a result of turning from and turning towards God. I'm following the Spirit and I'm living a new life by the way of the Spirit. I can't do that in and of myself, but that's not giving me to heaven. He's getting me to heaven. You understand? But when you look at your life, if God was to look at your life, which he is, is it pleasing to him? Does your life belong to God? If you were sitting there just having a coffee with God this morning, and you're talking, which suggestions would Jesus give you? Let's pick someone new in the man cave. How about Jeff? Jeff's pretty new and he has a nice family. Hey Jeff. Yes, Lord. How's that coffee? <laughs> Lord, this is the best coffee ever. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> That's funny stuff, guys. That's funny. So Jesus says, here he knows the answer. Would you, what was the last thing you read about me? I don't know, Lord. When was the last time you read your Bible? Here he knows. Point taken, Lord. You know, Jeff, I really like drinking coffee with you. And Jeff says, man, Lord Jesus, I love drinking coffee with you. And Lord says this to Jeff, Jeff, we should talk more, you and I. You're right, Lord, we should. What is that called? It's called talk. What does the Bible call it? Prayer? Because it's more earnest. But when I'm at the workplace, what am I doing? I'm talking to God. I'm sharing my heart. He's already, he already knows me like a book. He knows my desires. He knows my shortcomings. I'm not trying to impress God. He knows me as I am. Guys, we can't impress God. Look at your life, okay? 
Just like that rat knew his environment, what is the environment that you're living in, okay? What is the life that you're living in? And is it pleasing? And if it's not pleasing, what changes are you gonna make? Guys, sometimes it's just a matter of this much change that changes everything. I wake up a little bit earlier and I spend time with God. I dedicate the day to God. I get my sorry tail out of bed in the morning and I do find a church, okay, where there's few hypocrites, okay, which I am one of those, because I'm not perfect. I fit right on in because I'm a sinner. Christ came for sinners, not for those who are healthy and well. Do you know what I'm saying? Guys, in our life, in our pilgrimage, in our walk with the Lord, it is the slightest adjustments in our thinking, okay, in our actions, in all, what we speak, how we're living, that makes such a dramatic difference, okay, in the long run. Guys, let me share this with you, and I'm not picking on you. I know people who are just so smart. Man, I'm, they are smart. You know who they're smart like? They're smart like the rat. I mean, they're just smart. I see the trap. I, pff, I'm not going to fall for that stuff. I'm not surrendering my life to no man. I'm, a, I, I'm the ruler of this ship. Say this, I'm the master of my own destiny. If it's going to happen, it's up to me. Oh, what, what's that pain I have in my heart? I think I'm having a heart attack. Oh, you're the master of your own destiny. Here's the thing. Open up your chest. Start working on your heart. You give yourself a heart you, a transplant. You know what I'm saying? Or you can give yourself a spiritual heart transplant by asking Jesus Christ into your life. Watch this. I know a lot of people, they think they're smart. And they exclude God because they think they're so smart. God doesn't call the wise. Okay? He hides the things from the wise. And he gives it to people like you and I in the man cave. He just places it before us and he says, eat all you want. Enjoy me. I'll bless you. Let me share this with you. I know a lot of people who think they're really smart and they're really wise. I really do. And I mean, they have it all figured out. Hey, it's, it's because God created everything, okay? And everybody's here and we're all in the same position. I'm with you so far. Um, it's like an end to a wagon wheel and all those spokes go into the center and that's God. <sighs> Golly, did you call yourself smart? <gasps> okay, because here's the thing. L let me just share this with you. Uh, that theology is from the pit of hell, okay? It, that isn't correct. That's false. How many, can I ask you a question? How many spokes are on the wagon wheel? Well, you know, I watched Gunsmoke a few days ago, Matt, so I actually know this one. There's about 12, okay? Uh, 11 of those spokes that are going to the center are leading to hell. Okay, there's only one spoke that's leading to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Yeshua, the bright and morning star, your Savior. You can know God and you can acknowledge God as Elohim, as Creator, okay? And miss heaven by a million miles, okay? Uh, because knowing God created everything, because He also created rats that are really, really smart, okay? He did that, okay? When I look at a rat, do I think that the rat studying got a PhD? No, God made that rat have wisdom, okay? To not eat the cheese that I tried to kill him with, okay? But eventually, the rat can actually deceive himself and think he's so smart and he misses it and he takes one final bite, boom, and it's over. Are you the rat? Are you the guy that thinks I got it figured out, but that your belief system is contrary to the word of God? And God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me, but you figured another way. Give me a break, partner. You're going to close your eyes in death and open your eyes in hell. Let's get back to the Pharisees and the religious leaders, the sect, the Sadducees. They thought they understood it. I mean, they understood this. Man, did they know the Old Testament. I mean, they knew it. But it wasn't enough just to know this. I mean, they had it, they, they actually had little boxes that they put around their, uh, their, their head with the scriptures inside that little box. I mean, a little wooden box, and they had the scriptures rolled up in there to show how much they knew God. Look, look, look. So these guys had done their due diligence in knowing scripture. They just didn't know the author. You hear a great story? There's this person, he's sitting there and he's at a museum and he's looking at this beautiful, beautiful artwork, right? And a, 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 a man, very shabbily dressed with a cane, sits right next to him, right? And they sit there for what seems like an eternity, just staring at this picture. And finally, the guy who's really dressed up says, do you know what that picture's of? And the, the old guy kind of looks at him, he, he goes, go ahead. And, he, and the, this, this guy, 
right? <laughs> Tells him everything about this picture. I mean this. The, 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 the painter was thinking this. And did you see what he did here with the paint? Why he did that? And, and, the, and the old guy's just like, yeah, yeah, wow. And he says, now look at this right here. Do you see the owl? Yeah. And he says, and do you know what this means here? And, and, the, and the old guy just kind of looks at him. And they just go, go ahead. He says, this right here, this is what this masterful painter meant. This is what it means. And he starts using all this philosophy and all this crap and just throwing all this stuff out. And then the old guy says, how sure are you about all of this? He says, I study this guy. I know him inside and out. I mean, here's the thing. The, the, me and this guy could be in the same room and I and here's like we could look at each other and know it you know what I'm saying and the old guy says I am that guy <laughs> and you've got it a hundred percent wrong and the guy the old guy pulls out his license goes like this puts it back in his wallet and he walks out how many people are like the guy in the nice suit how many people or like the rat okay how many people are just so smart that they don't understand how simple okay salvation truly is okay God okay the great baker okay has put the cookies on the bottom shelf partner See, Jesus and God the Father have made it so simple okay it's so simple it's silly call to me exclude everything else sell out to me you're saved ask me into your life to help you ask me to forgive you ask me to help you to live this life i mean you know what i'm saying oh it's too, that's too simple that's too simple I, you know man can't accept god on his terms you know why because of pride man always wants to earn his way man wants honor Man wants prestige. Man wants to think, I did it. I pulled up my pants and pulled up my boots. I did it. See, that's what their religious leaders, they were adding all this stuff to the Bible. They were adding all this stuff to the Bible, and then they got so calloused in their relationship with God, they didn't even know God. They didn't even care that someone was about to meet God and worship God, okay, for the first time in 400 plus years. This is the first time God has spoken, okay? When we go from Malachi to Matthew, 400 years has passed, and God's been quiet. He's been quiet. And now God's coming up on the scene. Christ, the Lamb of God, okay? Emmanuel, Christ with us. And they're going to just ignore the whole thing. Is that your life? Or are you on fire for the Lord? Who would you say you're more like? Hey guys, let me leave you with this. The Magi, the three wise men, as they're seeking Christ, as they're looking for the Messiah, do you know what they were doing? They were looking upward. They were looking for God. They were following God's star. They were looking towards that, okay? What were the Pharisees and the scribes in the sect doing? They were looking down. They were actually looking down at the Word. And yet, looking down at the Word, they missed the whole thing because they weren't looking for the author and finisher of their faith. They were just religious in nature, possessing nothing but professing everything. They closed their eyes in death and opened their eyes in hell. Friends, where are you in this Christmas season? Are you accepting Christ and that free gift? I mean, watch this, guy. Someone knocks on your door, okay, and they offer you a free gift. Are you going to take it? Or are you going to say, what is it? What's in the box? Who paid for it? I mean, you start drilling the poor guy, and it's wrapped up in a beautiful bow. It's just a gift. It's for you. Well, I, I don't need a gift. I don't want a gift. I'm doing quite well. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how many people are just like that? God has given you the greatest gift of all himself. But you want to unwrap the gift, figure out the gift. You don't want to take the gift. You don't even want to sign for the gift. You don't want to have anything to do with the gift, okay? You are spurning the gift and the giver of the gift, okay? And one day you're going to need that gift. That gift is the key, but you don't have the key because you rejected the gift and the giver of the gift. You rejected the person who said, this is the way, the only way. See, the cookies are on the bottom shelf. They're not up here and they're not up here. There were a child could receive the gift. All he has to do is cry out. Telling you to do, don't overanalyze it. Come as you are, accept Jesus on his terms. He's the dictator, he's the potentate, he's the one that made the rules, okay? The script is his, it's not ours, okay? 
Take a cookie, eat the cookie, thank God for the cookie. Make sure you do what God requires of you, okay? Enjoy your Lord this holiday season. And Christmas is coming around the corner. I love it. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave, guys. Yeah.